average teacher salary because we're I think 24th in the country in average teacher salary as a state but we're 11th in um, in, in rank I think they'd like to get all the way to 11th or 10th um, so I think we should try to support others but also recognize if, if we can somehow parse it to say to maintain that flexibility to say un unless or until we've met that obligation and now I'll contradict myself by saying, but it's a lot more expensive to live here. So <laughs> there's there's a cost of living component that maybe we need to yeah. So so maybe that is a fair fair point to make. I don't know. Great, thanks you guys. We can continue to work on that, and I might work more with Peter on that one. Um, so after that, there are a number of kind of funding related. Um, issues. None of them were specifically addressed this year. Um, we can go through, and Peter, maybe we can meet at some point to talk through whether it continues to make sense to have each of those as a separate item or if we want to do some sort of more general funding point. So we can, we can work through that. Um, and then the final issues are kind of voucher related, which I think we probably will continue to keep those on there. Um, then why don't we skip to the other document, because that is just some ideas I put down based on um, what some of the organizations I looked at are talking about for possible items this year. So just really quickly um, to get some feedback from you guys on whether we would want to include any of these. Um, the first one is the support staff cap. And Peter, I'd love to hear from you about whether, you know, kind of how this has impacted us as a district, if it has. Um, it, is it, it significant? It course? is significant. Okay. I, I think we do need to keep that in there. It was part of... Um, during the economic downturn, it was something that was sort of pulled off of the plate from school divisions, and uh, we'd like to see that res re uh, that support cap restored across the state. Um, because, and I don't remember exactly what the dollar figure is, and I think we can get Lilla Wise to help us too, um, if if you'd like to use her again as our legislative liaison. But um, she can give us even some dollar figures that say here's what it means to the city of Falls Church to get that support cap restored. But yes, I would I would strongly recommend that. Strongly, and, and that seems to be one issue that a number of groups are going to be pushing this year. So um, I think it makes sense to have it on there. Teacher pay, we already touched on. Um, teacher shortage is very general. Again, I think that wraps in to teacher pay. Um, there, there are some items out there related to assessment, and I really don't know if we want to get involved in this issue or not. Peter, I'd love to hear from you a little bit on this. Um, I know Arlington has brought forth some language to VSBA related to um, performance assessments and using performance assessment, um, I believe, as end of course assessments for high school. Um, and on the face, it sounds similar to what we're doing for IB, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether or not we want to get involved in that issue and um, what you think we would potentially want to say if we did. Sure. I, I, I'd love to work with you on that. I think in the big picture, um, what we would have some interest in, I want to work with William Bates on it as well uh, as the chief academic officer, but really looking at um, how do we uh, reduce the, and, and the, the legislation would be to reduce the number of SOLs um, in exchange for more performance-based assessments that indicate what students know. And they're locally developed performance assessments, and we do it already with many of our courses, but it would be doing it uh, in a more robust way with, and I, I think, I think it's worthy. I think it's worthy. Great. Okay. Anyone, I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts on that issue, comments? I guess I would just say, generally, um, I think that we ought to have the flexibility to do performance-based assessments as a 
if nothing else, I can think of situations in which for a particular student that might be a much more effective way of assessing what they actually do know um, because for whatever reason they're just not going to respond well to a, a traditional you know, test-based environment in, in a way that you wouldn't be able to do if we had that flexibility. So I, I, I would, you know, personally, I would think we ought to argue for it. Great, thanks. Um, the next issue is school construction. This was kind of the big issue highlighted at the VSBA Legislative Conference. Um, again, you know, I think we're a division that has managed up to this point to deal with a number of our issues. Um, they just, it was raised there that, you know, there are a significant number of districts that really are, are in great need of new facilities and just simply don't have the money to pay for them. I think we were able to get creative. Um, so I, I don't know if this is an issue you guys feel it makes sense for us to put on our agenda or if you feel like we've kind of addressed our issues and it's not a high priority for us. Any thoughts? <laughs> it's okay if you don't have any thoughts right now. We can continue to work on this. But In general, I'm as a very small school division, on things that don't directly affect us, I'm happy to be a free rider. I don't think we want to put a lot of resources into solving problems that really are more disconnected with what we face on a day-to-day -day basis. Great, thanks. Um, let's see, the school counselor issue, I put that on here, it was on somebody's agenda. I think it's similar to what we already touched on, um, requirements from the state and whether or not we're getting the funding to meet those. Um, just two other items that, again, were new to the VSBA agenda that I guess I needed some input on because I don't know a lot about them. Um, mandatory reporting of misdemeanors. Um, Peter, I, again, I'd be curious just to hear from you if, if that's a problem we've ever run into, um, if you have any thoughts on that. Um, the, the position is that VSBA supports eliminating the mandatory reporting of misdemeanors and status offenses by students to law enforcement for school-based incidents. Um, and there's a good rationale there. Um, I, I, um, I, I'm much more in favor of looking at how we support school counselors and behavioral assistants. So if, if we're able to um, sort of weave those two together, I, I don't know that it does any good to report misdemeanors or status offenses to the police on minors. Um, and I don't see a reason why we would want to why would we want to do that? Um, do we have a problem with it? No. Um, but I also don't know that it's a good idea. So it may be something you want to consider supporting. It came from Arlington. Great. Okay. Well, this was just sort of, I think, a first crack at running some of this by you guys. I will continue to work with Peter um, and Aaron on what our agenda might look like. But... These are just some of the issues that seem to be out there at this point for the year ahead. Um, any other kind of general thoughts, comments from people of things we might want to add? Or Have you guess? had a chance to talk to Lilla Weiss yet? Does yeah. she, has she come? Because I know she, someone I worked with her, um, we often would just ride along on some issues that Arlington or Fairfax had just to be a supportive voice. But as Mr. Ridinger noted, we're very small. But, you know, we would just kind of <coughs> join in so as a region we could all work together um so sometimes she has a she has more insight into some of these right, right. than maybe we would otherwise have yeah. and i know last year and a number of ours did come from from that yeah. almost to the point that i thought it was like we almost had their agenda actually a was, lot of their stuff almost right? why yeah. i sort of wanted to start yeah. with what are our concerns first and make sure we address those and then build on some of those bigger issues but if you know if there's nothing else really specific that people have go ahead Phil so just a few questions more I, I, I don't know that these are all things that or any of them are things that we would want to include but you know, it occurs to me that as we're going through and doing all of our work on policies we're continually adding 
sexual orientation and gender identity to the things that cannot be discriminated against. And for the most part, I think that's not in anything in t Title 22.1. It's, it's in other parts of the code. Um, I just, I, I wouldn't mind certainly having an element to our legislative agenda that those should at least insofar as conduct at schools is concerned be included as criteria or inappropriate reasons for discrimination. Um, the second thing is also maybe not outside our, our mandate, and I don't know if, you, if a program exists like this, but as we talk about the shortage of teachers, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, we're also thinking about what the supply side looks like. And so, you know, there are federal programs like Teach for America, you know, I, I don't know if there's a similar program in Virginia or not, but I don't know why there shouldn't be programs that would help fund people to get college degrees if they go in and teach at a public school for like four years or something like that. And that may be, you know, again, that's sort of outside the realm of stuff that we would be influential on. I just, I, it's a, it strikes me as a, as a reasonable way to approach it in a way that dollars could be sent, spent on the state level that would benefit everybody throughout the state regardless of what their um, local index was for in terms of how much funding they got from the state. The, the last thing I think that might be worth taking a look at is the general notion of um, school safety and firearms. Um, there, again, regulation of firearms is outside of the normal concern for schools, but there are things that one could do more specifically associated with schools like instituting programs to um, inform parents or even requiring parents of school of minor children to um, lock up their firearms at night and you know, I, I assume that somebody else is doing the sort of work on that but you know as a as well well not a Virginia issue and you know certainly not a false church issue much more a national issue um, that's a I think a place that this board has spent an, an increasingly large amount of time on. And one of the things that, you know, as I've been out talking to people, it, you know, it, it continually depresses me that we have to design a new high school to mitigate active shooter incidents. It just, it shouldn't have to be that way. So that ought to, that is a personal priority for me and I think for some others as well. So those are three things I'd consider. Thank you. And I would just say on that last one at the um, VSBA legislative conference, part of the discussion was kind of on that issue, what happens if the Democrats take over control of the state legislature and kind of the idea that there may be more action from a state level if that happens. So a bit of a wait and see, um, you know, and exactly what that looks like could, could be a wide range of things but it, it was addressed there. Yeah, I would say, you know, with respect to this, the, the last couple issues, disorderly conduct, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a more regional approach to legislative priorities because small as we are, if we can, if we can work together, I think we'll all get where we want to go faster and more effectively, so I, I would, align with our neighbors as much as possible on a lot of these things. And I also think, you know, there are some deeper systemic issues, the, the teacher shortage, um, funding for construction, where I think it's probably worth spending time to build larger support for public education in general because it isn't getting funding enough and that does affect teacher salaries, it does affect people's willingness to teach, it affects facilities. So I think aggregating all those factors we, we really need to say that Virginia needs to up its game on all these fronts even if we're doing relatively well so well, I want to thank you for your very thoughtful um, research and the way you put this together it was really helpful thanks so much um, last, we've got 6.04, our FY20 monthly budget report, and I believe we are going to have a slight change to the presentation of this tonight. Well, unfortunately, Miss um, Michael couldn't be here tonight. I know she's watching at home, so I will not um, say anything about your report, Kristen. 
uh, for fear of completely bungling it. But anyway, um, this evening, um, 